Hello Rejoice family and those beyond who happen to be watching. I'm continuing on with this midweek series kind of going through uh, Luther's small catechism, uh, a, a Lutheran approach to what faith is like. And so I'm going to go continue on through the commandments today. We did kind of an introduction in the first commandment last time. Uh, this time I'm going to take the second, third, and fourth commandment. I'm going to try and do three uh, each week as we finish this up, finish up the commandments. So the, the second commandment. Um, you shall make, not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. So, what is this? Luther's answer, we are to fear and love God, so that we do not curse, swear, practice magic, lie, or deceive using God's name, but instead use that very name in every time to, of need to call on, to pray to, praise, and to give thanks to God. So, this second commandment about how we use the name of God, how do we honor God by how we speak about God and how we use God's name. And and again, there are lots of ways where we don't. So we don't curse. And, you know, this has n nothing to do with what, what most people consider your uh, inappropriate words, your, your words that we consider swearing. It has everything to do with how we use God's name. And so literally, anytime you combine God's name, God, with damn, that is a curse. To damn is to condemn, to, to want, literally, to be condemned to, uh, to perdition, to hell. Um, we don't swear using God's name. Again, going back to uh, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Anything else is... Anything beyond that is from the evil one, you know. Ultimately, and I'm not opposed to, there There may be times in our life where we have to take an oath. It's not that I'm opposed to that, but our words should be faithful and should be honest on their own. Um, practice magic, lie, or deceive using God's name. Again, we may not think of practicing magic, but I do think there are people who, who unintentionally use God's name as kind of like this this magical thing that, you know, if I just put God's name in front of this, everything's going to be okay. Or if I just call um, the name of God. And again, uh, normally when we talk about the name of God, we are talking it, where God is, is named, gives God's name in Exodus of uh, Yahweh or um, what used to be uh, pronounced Jehovah. Um, you know, I will very rarely say those words just because I hold them in, in very high value. I, I speak about God, I speak about Jesus, I speak about God's Spirit, but I always try to do it in a respectful way. And again, not lying or deceiving is God, is God's name. Instead, we use that name to call upon in our time of need, to pray to, to praise, and to give thanks to. And again, how we talk about God shapes how others view the way we view God. Our words about God are Literally, that's what theology is. Theology, all it is, is words about God. And our way of thinking about God is informed by the way in which we, we talk about God. So I'm going to move on to the third commandment, which is on the Sabbath day. So remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. So what is this for Luther? Luther says we are to fear and love God so that we do not despise God's word or preaching, but instead keep that word holy and gladly learn and hear it. So... Sabbath in, uh, in the original commandments is about a day of rest. God rested on the seventh day. The people of Israel were to rest on the seventh day. It was not to be a day of work, a day of commerce, a day that was just like every other day. They were, it was to be set aside, and the practice of resting was also a practice of learning to trust God. Now, in Luther's time, it's also connected to worship. And so for Luther, worship is a place where we meet God. And he talks about preaching being a place where God's word, God's word is both Christ and scripture and preaching. And all three in the same and all three interconnected. And that God's word being proclaimed in preaching and in reading scripture is a place where God meets us. So we come to a place where God meets us. And so we, we trust that we want to be in a place where we can hear the word of God proclaimed. 
And we trust that somehow through the Spirit and through the action of imperfect people like me, that God can be there in the midst of that space between what is said and what's heard in the ear. That somehow the Spirit of God can take these imperfect words of mine and use them to do God's work. And we trust that there's something holy in this time and in this moment. There's, there is this sacred, sacramental understanding of the act of worship itself, that, that God is at work in all that we're doing when it comes to our worship. So again, from the Old Testament side, from the, um, the Bible side, Sabbath is about rest. Again, our Lutheran understanding also brings in the idea of Sabbath as worship in a place where we meet God. And finally, the fourth commandment. Honor your father and mother. So Luther's answer to what is this? We are to fear and love God so that we neither despise nor anger our parents and others in authority, but instead honor, serve, obey, love, and respect them. So again, the fourth commandment when it was originally written in the uh, in the book of Exodus and the book of Deuteronomy, you know, is primarily for children to take care of their aging parents. Not not as much for young children to obey their parents, but so that children who are adults take care and don't take don't just neglect their their older parents when they become a burden on them. But again, Luther interprets this from his own time. He interprets it for his own people, um, and and there is an an aspect to what Luther says that I think is well worth hearing. So it's not only that we don't anger our parents, but also others in authority. Now, is that absolute? You know, if we have to choose between following God and following somebody in authority, for Luther the answer was clear, we follow God. That's one of the reasons that Luther was such an instrumental force in the Reformation, is he felt he was following God and he felt that the church of his time was not. But his, his default is, you know, we as people who live in a world that God is at work at, and not just in churchly spheres, but also, you know, as hard as it may believe, be to believe at times, even in governmental and religious spheres, you know, that we do honor, serve, obey, love those who are in authority. Again, that authority is always conditioned by, you know, is it in line with what God calls us to, how God calls us to act and, and live. But I do think that you know, we are, Lutherans are not revolutionaries. We're reformers. We are people who are trying to, to make a difference in the world, trying to, to make the world a positive place. And we don't do that by, by tearing everything down and then trying to recast it and rebuild it in our image. We take what's already there and we continue to try and call it back to the, the purpose God has for it. So again, you know, it's taking these ancient uh, scriptures, taking the wisdom of people like Luther and other uh, wise people throughout the history of the church, and trying to bring that wisdom together and say, well, what kind of life do we live? And I think that's part of what these commandments are for, is how do we live a life that is worthy of our calling as the people of God? So thank you for listening. Thank you for your participation. I'll be back next week with the next three commandments. I hope you have a great week, and I look forward to seeing those of you who I can see at worship at worship, or those who worship digitally, um, that we look forward to you being able to do that as well. Have a great day.